Today on Hands On Photography, we're taking another look at the world of macro photography. And yes, macro photography can be quite expensive because yeah, it, it just is. I mean, photography, all of the lenses, all of the gear, it, it adds up. Well, that's not the case today. I'm telling you right now, we're gonna save you some money in the world of macro photography. And I got a tool that's right here and it's just gonna work perfectly for you. Y'all stay tuned. Hey, it's time for the annual Twit audience survey. Head on over to twit.tv slash survey 23 and fill out our quick survey so we can, you know, figure out what exactly you as loyal Twit listeners are looking for in content so we can make sure we're providing you the content that you deserve, as well as, you know, it'll help us provide good quality information for sponsors to fit you as a loyal Twit listener. So head on over to twit.tv slash survey 23 and fill out the annual Twit survey. We will be closing it on January 31st, but if you fill it out right now, I don't have to mention this to you ever again. <laughs> Thanks. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus... Membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. What's happening, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography. Hey, I hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable, as always. It's another fun Thursday where I get to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And today we're not getting into post processing. We're talking about the actual aspect of shooting something. Yes, we're going to have some fun talking macro photography. So let's just dive right on into it. Now, uh, a little while back, I got some feedback over on social media. Uh, someone reached out to me and they said, hey, have you done anything about macro photography and reverse rings? And I've been wanting to talk about this for quite a while. And I just hadn't really been able to get around to it. Uh, but that's now. Today is the day we're going to dive into that. So first, let's take a look at the principles of macro photography. What is it? Um, as explained way back in episode 47 of Hands on Photography. Yeah, that was way, way back in the days. I think that was like 2020. This is when um, the subject of macro photography first came out. And I wanted to explain that basically it's framing up the shot to give you a ratio of a one to one projection onto the image sensor. OK, now, what does that mumbo jumbo mean? In short, it means what you see through your lens is really up close and personal and it's fully captured on the image sensor. There's no cropping necessary. It literally just fills up your frame, whatever your your subject matter is. It could be a rose petal, uh, a, 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 I don't know, a leaf or something. It just something that's usually small that you really want to get up close and personal inside of the frame. Now, because of physics, macro photography with cameras and stock lenses straight out the box typically uh, isn't going to work. You really need to have some some specific tools in place for this to work. Most lenses that you buy, they are not macro lenses. Uh, they're great lenses, you know, like I'm holding this lens here. This is a Canon EF 85 mil 1.8 that I absolutely love. I even love it for video. You see, I have this little focus ring around it. Um, but yeah, most of these are not considered macro lenses. Well, what does that mean? When you shoot with a macro lens, you're able to get much closer to your subject uh, to grab the image. And um, it, it's you can't do that without a macro lens. OK, and that's basically dealing with the minimum focal distance. Uh, so when you grab your, your regular camera and you try to take a, a photograph of someone that is up close, you usually end up having to step back a foot or three. It just happens to be that way. Now, with the macro lens, you can get much closer for some. It's like the 
It's probably my favorite lens to play with. It's the Canon EF 100 millimeter F 2.8 macro. A lens like that, you can get as close as one foot or for you metric folks, 0.3 meters and uh, really be able to capture your images up close and personal. Now, with that said, that beautiful piece of glass, it ain't for the faint of heart when it comes to cost. It's hmm. at the time of recording this episode, you can get the Canon EF 100 millimeter F 2.8 macro lens. And that's the EF, not the RF. Uh, it's for about twelve hundred dollars at the time of this recording. So that's not cheap. So. With that said, as I mentioned way back in episode 47, yeah, macro lenses can be expensive, uh, but I also mentioned the option of extension tubes. Now, extension tubes are these little things right here. They're pretty, pretty neat pieces of kit to add to your photography arsenal. How do these work is you attach them to the back of your lens before attaching the lens to your camera body. And what happens is this decreases the minimum focal distance for your lens, allowing you to get closer to the subject. Now, extension tubes, they're not terribly priced. Um, a lot of times you can get them for roughly $30 or so. But then again, I have seen some that were, you know, well over a hundred dollars. So you, you, you do have some options from a pricing standpoint, but don't you fret. I have another option for you. And it's these things right here. This here is called a reverse ring. Now these little doodads, they're super useful and, and very, very affordable, affordable. I'm talking like $7 affordable, literally. I don't think I paid $7 for this one, but I've seen uh, reverse rings be $7 or so. The most I've seen for a reverse ring is about 20 bucks. Now, how do they work? OK, so similar to an extension tube, you will attach the um, reverse ring to your lens. And instead of attaching it to the back of your lens, like I have. All right. So right here, I have my camera body right here in front of me and I don't have the lens on it. And the SD card door is open because, you know, we talked about oops moments. That means I don't have a card in there, so I need to leave that open. But anyway, um, and then I have my lens that I like to play with. This is my utility lens, the 24 to 105. And what you want to do is attach this ring to the front of your lens like so. And you literally just screw it on there like that, just like you're screwing on a filter for um, doing a neutral, dis neutral, dis neutral density. Why can't I talk today? <laughs> <laughs> but you screw it on and it will uh, allow you to attach the lens to the camera body. Not like you would any other way. You would attach it in a reverse fashion. So instead of me putting it the back of the lens to the camera body, I'm going to put the front of the lens to the camera body. You just line it up as so. So do like that. Boom. And it's in place. Now, why would you do that? If you've ever looked at one of your lenses on your camera, just look, you know, straight through it. You're going to see that you get a whole different perspective and a different magnification when you look at it from the back of the lens like you normally like a normally a camera body would do it versus flipping it around. So by flipping it around, it's really going to magnify the scene on your image sensor and it's going to allow you to really shrink that focal distance for your camera, allowing you to be able to shoot macro photography. Now, with that said, there are some catches to consider. Since you're reversing the lens onto your camera body, you're going to lose some functionality. OK, so for those of you that are using autofocus and, and auto iris, you know, the aperture and so forth, you're not going to have that capability because the contacts are not connecting to your camera body. You will have to handle all of that manually, particularly if you want to fix your aperture. I highly recommend because this macro photography opening up your camera aperture as wide as you can for this particular lens is up. It's F4 for this other lens I have is F1.8. So attach your camera to the body properly, set that aperture as wide open as you can, and then just pull the lens off, not pull it off, but you know, detach the lens from the camera body without turning off the camera. This will lock the aperture blades in place wide open so you can get as much light as possible. Then attach your reverse rings onto the lens, attach the lens onto your camera body, 
and you'll be able to shoot some pretty daggum cool macro shots. I highly recommend, as I've always said before, get yourself a nice sturdy tripod because it's going to be a lot easier to steady yourself when you're dealing with a, a, a subject that's really, really close. Micro jitters are going to show up way, way more than they would if something that was off in the distance. So shoot these on a tripod and make sure you have plenty of light to light the scene. OK, so you can even use like a flashlight, just get a nice bright flashlight to shine down on your subject or bounce it off the surface to the subject, whatever it takes. It doesn't take a lot of money to get these cool shots. I literally took a photograph. Here's a, a spool of gaffer's tape and a good old fashioned penny. Some of you folks are not going to know what the heck a penny is. Sat it down on my desk here in this light and snapped the photograph and filled the frame. And this is what I got. And I did just. A, a minimum amount of retouching on it, but notice all of the detail that I'm able to get on this and it's filling the frame. This is not cropped in. This is the, the full frame of the, uh, the image here. Now, if I want to crop it, sure. So let's crop it down because I want to get even closer, get even more details. I can do that and I'm not going to lose a lot of quality. Why? Because I got all of it in the frame from the get go. I got that that one to one projection that we want in macro photography. So if you've been interested in getting into macro photography, yes, I highly recommend get yourself a lens that's dedicated to macro photography. Some of them are not as expensive as that popular 100 millimeter that I showed there from Canon, but then you have the ascension tubes and sometimes that might be a little bit too much for people. I get it. I don't know. Now this here, the, the filter rings, the, the reverse rings over here, look, you, you're not going to get any pity from me on that. That's six bucks. You can sacrifice one fancy cup of coffee and get yourself a filter ring and attach it to the front of your lens. One note on that. I should mention this when you're buying filter rings or, or reverse rings, make sure you take note of these, the, the, the size, the diameter, on the front of your lenses. In in the case of the, the utility lens that I use, it has a marking on there and it tells me that it's 77 millimeters. So whenever I want to look for filters or reverse rings, I need to look for something that's going to fit 77 millimeter diameter and I'll be just fine. Or in this case, this lens here, this is much smaller than this one here. So it's not a 77 millimeter but I have what's called a step up ring over here on, on the top of it. So I can attach the reverse ring or any type of filters to that step up ring because that equates to 77 millimeters. All of these are inexpensive and definitely worth having in your kit. All right. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you all for hanging out with me each and every week. Go ahead and subscribe in whatever podcatcher you're using. If this was your first time joining us, thank you for hopping on over here. So subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and our YouTube channel. Lots and lots of content each and every week. And I'm looking forward to sharing more and more tips with you all in the future. You can check out the website twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography to see all of the previous episodes and previous show notes, including some really, really fun interviews I've done with some other photographers in the field. All right. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week. And folks, continue to send your feedback and share the show out with others. Send your feedback to hop at twit.tv. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, image critiques, I have recently gotten some image critiques that I'll be sharing very soon here on the show. Uh, if you are cool with me sharing your images on the show, please write in the email. Hey, it's OK. Aunt. You can share my images in the show because I don't want to share these images from you without your consent. OK, but stay tuned. We got a feedback show coming up really, really soon. Thank you again, everybody. Hey, safely create and dominate, and I will catch you next time. Don't miss All About Android every week. We talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer -y goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, all about Android on twit.tv.